You might remember this system from a couple videos ago. This is the IBM E Server X Series 220, a dual Pentium 3 machine that was an absolute behemoth when it was released in 2001. That was nearly 20 years ago, and it's still holding up pretty well today. Uh, in the last video I made about this PC, we took a look at it running Windows 7 and Zubuntu, and it did run both operating systems. However, um, both operating systems were a tad bit painful to use, mainly due to poor video performance. The system has onboard Savage 4 Pro graphics, but I could not get the drivers working for Windows 7 or Zubuntu. It's just too old. Um, so I bought a GeForce... 6200 off eBay for 19 bucks, and we're gonna try using this in this machine. This is the PCI variant. And along with that, I also bought more RAM for this system. So when I tested this initially, we tested this in its stock configuration, well, nearly stock configuration. I threw in a SATA card so we could use some solid state drives with it. But besides that, I didn't really make any changes to the base system. Today though, we are going to be making changes. We're gonna to toss in four gigabytes of PC133 SD RAM, so I have uh, four one gigabyte sticks right here. And this is actually pretty high density stuff for PC 133. And then as I just mentioned, on top of that, we're gonna be throwing in this dedicated video card. I scored the RAM for $38 off eBay and the video card for 20. That's quite a pricey upgrade for a system this old, but I really wanted to see what the system could do at its full potential. Now I'm not gonna upgrade the CPUs just because I don't have the budget for that. But I think adding four gigs of RAM into the system along with a video card is going to make it pretty pretty usable um, with a couple modern operating systems. So for our Windows test, we are once again going to be using a 32-bit version of Windows 7 Pro. These Pentium 3s are missing the SSE2 instruction set, which makes running Windows 10 out of the question. Someone in the comments section of the last video I made about this X server mentioned that I might be able to run the Windows 8 consumer preview, but that just led to blue screen after blue screen <laughs> when I tried it. Last time we ran Windows on this machine, it was a very painful experience. The system resolution was limited to 1024 by 768, and trying to navigate the UI on both Windows and Linux was like watching Molasses Drip. Today, things are a completely different story. The 220's hardware upgrades brought around a major performance increase. Not only was the UI in 1080p now and much more responsive, but I was also able to get some older games running through the Steam client. Now, granted, they were set to their lowest settings and weren't exactly playable. However, keep in mind that you are looking at a machine from 2001 running games that were released over six years later. Also, the system was never really meant to be a gaming machine. It does have server in its name after all. As you can see, Crisis barely gets along at an average of 10 FPS, and Left 4 Dead 2 was about the same story, averaging out at about 15 frames per second. Now, one small caveat to this is that we are stuck using the Windows Display Driver for the 6200, which is fine, but I would have preferred to use the latest NVIDIA drivers. I tried everything I could think of to get the latest NVIDIA drivers to work, with no luck, and yes, I tried older driver versions as well, and they all failed to install or brick the system, which was so much fun. I did manage to get the 304 drivers working with Debian 9, and we will take a look at that in a few minutes. The general user experience is much better than before, but I would still be hesitant to use this as a daily driver. The boot times are pretty much the same as before, so I didn't bother recording new clips for that. I tested web browsing using Chameleon, which is a lightweight browser for older machines, and an older version of Firefox. Browsing through basic sites such as the Associated Press and my site went over pretty well. However, more script-heavy sites such as CNN still brought down the system to a grinding halt. Additionally, HD video streaming was a no-go and local HD video playback resulted in a nice slideshow. The system is capable of some light multitasking, especially with that additional RAM installed. I had no problem opening a word processor and web browser side by side. However, just as I mentioned before, the system came to a screeching halt when I tried to visit a more taxing site. I managed to get performance test version 7 to run, the previous versions crashed when I tried to start them, and the results were pretty impressive given the system's age. And I think that this is one of those rare cases where the benchmarks actually lead you on to think that the system is faster to use than it actually is. Getting the NVIDIA 304 driver to work on recent Linux distros was a nightmare. The 304 drivers are incompatible with Ubuntu 18.04, caused 16.04 to break, and would not work with Zubuntu or Lubuntu 16.04. 
Finally, I got the drivers to work with the latest version of Debian, Debian 9. Though the system was really, really unstable with the NVIDIA driver installed, it crashed quite a bit while I was testing. Uh, when it did work, the system was responsive enough to use, and Super Tux Cart was pleasantly playable with the settings turned down low. Out of curiosity, I popped open Blender in a sample scene, and I was actually able to navigate around the 3D window. I tried to go into the rendered view, but that just caused the system to freeze. I was going to test out web browsing, but at that point, the environment became too unstable to use, and I called it a day with Debian. And that was a look at a system from nearly 20 years ago running modern operating systems and applications. Now, the upgrades didn't improve the performance as much as I wanted them to. I was hoping that this would be a completely usable daily driver with the upgrades, and that just wasn't the case. I mean, if you just want to do some basic word processing, or browse a couple basic sites, then it's fine for that, but anything beyond that, this thing's just too slow. In addition to that, as you guys saw, hardware compatibility was a massive issue and a big pain in the butt. Also, I'm not going to get the question about why I didn't decide to just use Windows XP instead of Windows 7. And the main reason is because that's not the point of this video, right? Like I want to use um, a, an operating system that was as modern as possible and Windows 7 was the most modern version of Windows I could get up and running on this machine. So yeah, maybe one of these days I'll go back and look at Windows XP running on this system. Um, but today is not that day. So that's gonna be about it for this video guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and uh, drop a comment down in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you wanna check out the sellers where I got the RAM or the video card from, the links to the sellers eBay stores will be down in the description. And I think I hit everything. Thanks for watching guys. And I will see you guys in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.